because these people who were mentioned are not here, so we really can't sing happy birthday to them, but on the 12th of March is Mr. Billy Gibson's birthday, and on the 29th of March is Melissa Brooks' birthday. Does anybody else have a birthday, or you know somebody has a birthday in March? Say any idea who? My granddaughter, Alana, is on the 12th. The 12th, the 12th as well, okay. All right. Anyone else? A birthday or an anniversary? How about an anniversary? Anybody celebrating an anniversary next month? I know you don't want to say it, you do, right? <laughs> but anyway, so we do wish all who are having birthdays a very happy birthday uh, coming up in for the month of March uh, that is coming up for everyone. Let's all stand then as Al comes down and he'll lead us in our call to worship. Hymn number 184, Jesus is all the world to me, and in our opening prayer. <laughs>
Just a few things you need to be aware of, of that's taking place uh, here at Bayou Baptist Church. Of course, as if you don't know, probably everybody does by now, uh, this, this week coming here in St. Tammany Parish, there is no school, and uh, so they're out the whole week. I know some schools, like maybe in Mississippi, they're out for a few days, but here in St. Tammany Parish, they're out until the 4th of March, so they're out. Uh, for this whole coming week, so be aware of that, of course, and uh, of course, and everybody knows, unless you're living on an island somewhere, this coming Tuesday is Mardi Gras, uh, so, um, and of course, there are no parades here, but there are, there's going to be one, I know, in Covington, and a whole bunch of them, if you want to go south to New Orleans, and go into New Orleans, and Metairie, and that, uh, if you want to do that, you can do that on Mardi Gras Day as well. Um, this coming Wednesday, we will be resuming our Wednesday night Bible study for all who would like to come for that. Uh, and you've heard Tinka already. <laughs> so, um, so for all who would like to come, you can do that. And from uh, yes, ma'am. I just want to let everybody know we're supposed to go into First Thessalonians, but since they're going to have that in Sunday school, uh -huh. we're going to go into the Book of John. Okay, the Gospel of John. All right, so for those women on Wednesday night that are coming, they are going to be going into the Gospel of John. They're going to be starting with that, so you can be aware of that. For the men who are coming for us, we're going to be finishing up in the book of Jonah. We're in Jonah chapter 3. So for the men who are coming, if you want to read ahead, you can. We'll be in Jonah chapter 3 this Wednesday, and the following Wednesday we'll be in Jonah chapter 4. And then after that we'll decide what we're going to do or what, our, what, what, what next um, venture we're going to take on Wednesday night. Uh, again, on Wednesday night from 6 o'clock to 6.30, we will have food and fellowship for all who come. Uh, so, And you can come early than 6 o'clock as well, so don't think that, hey, just 6 o'clock. You can come early if you want. Uh, Usually everything's open by 5.30, so if you want to come early, you can and have longer fellowship. You can, you can do that as well. Um, but we're going to have that on Wednesday night. And if you are planning on bringing anything, 
on Wednesday night. Uh, please text me uh, and let me know uh, which can be bringing at least by Tuesday. That way, if somebody else calls or lets me know something beforehand, I can let people know, okay, this person's bringing this, and they can go according to that. But, uh, and, send, and then we'll have Bible study from 6.30 to 7.30 on Wednesday night. So this coming Wednesday, we'll go back to that. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday we are resuming our Sunday school hour. Uh, Sunday school will start at 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. I mean 10 a.m. I'm sorry, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Yeah, I don't think they want to do that. Kids, you couldn't do that either. Yeah. So anyhow, so since I woke everybody up, that's good. Uh, and, and, you, and you thought Paul put people to sleep, but wait, <laughs> we can put people to sleep as well. Uh, but anyhow, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, is Sunday school slash Bible study. So it's Bible study. So if you want to ask questions or you want to ask some things while you are uh, investigating and doing that, you can do that during the Sunday school time. Uh, you can, you know, like you do, you can raise your hand and say, hey, I got a question, is this, you know, we are allowed to do that during the time of Sunday school. You're even allowed to do that even here. I'm just letting you know as well, you know, if you have a question, you can always, a a you know, ask the question. I don't know if we'll answer it right away, or we'll have the right answer for you, but we can do that. Um, there are books in the back, not in the foyer area, but in the back, back there on, on the table. Uh, Brian's Sunday school class, if you were in Brian's class, there were books back there for the, for the school, Sunday school hour there. And also next to that is Al's, if you're in Al's class, uh, the, the adult class, there are books back there. You can take one uh, and you can tell the difference. Um, Al's class is a senior adult class, but anybody can go in there uh, and they're large print. So you find that. Also in the back next to the books are open windows. If you want a devotional for uh, the coming uh, three months, for March, April, and May, which is in there, you're more than happy to take one home and read it uh, each day. So it's a devotional for each day. So that's also back there if you would like to uh, have one of those open windows. These are open windows, large print devotionals, one for each day uh, in the book. You're more than welcome to have that. Uh, the 17th of uh, March is St. Patty's Day, St. Patrick's Day, so be aware of that. Um, and then April the 3rd, we are going to have an Easter banquet here at the church after the morning worship for all who would like to come. I do have a sign-up sheet for the Easter banquet, which I will put in the back for you as you're walking out or whatever, and you can take a look at it, and if you'd like, you can sign it. Uh, if not, you can wait till next Sunday, and I'll put it back where the Sunday school class is at. If you're there, you can sign it as well. Um, so, uh, depending upon what you want to bring, um, I would suggest you uh, sign it earlier than later, because if somebody else does it, then you may not. Say, you may say, "Well, I wanted to bring that." You can't. So, just let you know. Uh, sign up for whatever you would like to bring. If you would like to bring anything, um, that's up to you. We usually have a lot of food, so we are going to have, like I said, our Easter banquet, and this will be April the 3rd, the first Sunday in April. Easter this year is April the 17th. That falls in the middle of April. So we're basically going to have it two weeks before um, Easter, just so people have enough time when they do their Easter dinner or whatever on Sunday, you'll have that as well. Uh, and on Easter itself, usually here, we only have morning worship service on Easter Sunday. Uh, we do not do Sunday school, that way it gives people enough time in the morning to do whatever they have to do on Easter, and then they can come for worship service at 10.30. So be aware of that. Starting next Sunday, we will be collecting for our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Uh, that will be starting next Sunday. You'll have envelopes in the uh, pews uh, starting next Sunday. Now, the Annie Armstrong Easter offering is for mission work being done here in the U.S. of A. 
Uh, so uh, that, that'll be starting next week and you can give whatever the uh, Lord puts upon your heart. Um, uh, do it over and above what you're giving for the work at the church instead of, but hopefully that'll work out for you as well. You can find us on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. So if you can remember all of that, that's good. We'll, make, we'll continue to put them in a bulletin and you can uh, uh, continue to refresh yourself with it. Any other uh, news or anything else we need to be aware of, of anything else around here or anything else that we need to be uh, done. This should be it for the rain. The rain is gone, so, um, but this ain't going to bring us any cold weather. It's going to bring cool weather. So for those of you who are hoping for cold weather and for snow, forget it. It ain't going to happen here. Uh, if you want that, you're going to have to go up north. Uh, where, where's John at? Mon in Montana? Montana. Montana. Yeah, you go up there in Montana. You can get what? What was it this Thursday it was minus 25. So. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you if you want to if you want to indulge in that, go ahead. Go up go up that way. You know. And <laughs> I haven't had above minus 10 for almost two weeks. Now. Wow. Gee. Well, I would be hibernating. <laughs> Well, the band do. <laughs> and that's what I would do. <laughs> and other animals as well. So anyway, so if you want to do that, you can go up, up north and enjoy all the cold weather your heart desires concerning that. Um, so, so be aware of all that is going on and all that's taking place as well. Before Al comes, let me share with you a very familiar song. Um, in, uh, from, from our hymn book, and, and one that I want you, you know, you're familiar with, and just pay attention, of course, to the words, and you're probably very, very familiar with it, just a closer walk with D. Um, and, and, and as you're singing this, uh, we, like I said, in the sermon today, we'll be coming from Daniel chapter 3, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how they walk with the Lord. And you can think about it as that. <clears throat>
Rescue the Parachute. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, they're not allowing Linda or anybody to go and really see him. He's in a, uh, I thought of a more with at the COVID patients, and they don't let really anybody see. But he's doing good. Uh, Linda, I talked to Linda the other day, um, and she said he's watching TV, eating, you know. Uh, so they're taking good care of him. Uh, so uh, uh, no residual effects or anything else like that with him. Just a precaution. He doesn't have trouble breathing. Uh, he went in there because he was having a little trouble with respiratory, with breathing, but they don't have him on a respirator or anything else like that, so he's doing good, but I'd ask you to remember both Danny and Linda as well. Linda said it feels empty in the house without Danny being there, you know, so just remember both of them, but he's doing good and just continue to pray for him uh, as well. Uh, Johnny and Debbie Garrett are still in Kentucky. I'd ask you to remember and to pray for them. Uh, Beverly had a little setback this past week. Uh, so remember her in prayer as well as continue to remember uh, Debbie's uh, mom, Ms. Fulkerson, as well in prayer uh, with her health and both, both, of course, Johnny and Debbie. And Johnny, of course, with his ongoing battle and treatment with his cancer, is he doing okay? Uh, a friend of theirs, uh, Wayne Dixon, uh, was diagnosed with cancer about four years ago, <clears throat> and it seems he passed away. So I'd ask you to remember the family of Wayne Dixon, uh, friends of Johnny and Debbie. Um, so just remember the Dixon family with friends and family with his passing this past week, so do remember them as well. Uh, just continue to remember my, my youngest number two daughter, Melinda, um, 
as she is doing good, but she still has issues with her health from time to time uh, that she deals with. But just continue to remember her and, and pray for her and the family. Also with Candace, is she, how's she doing? She has good days. Okay, all right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so just remember Candace and the family in prayer and, and what they are dealing with. Right. Taking turns, coming back from school. Okay. All right. All right. But just, just remember that family. Remember them in prayer and, and what they're, they're dealing with as well. Um, again, just pray for the many different people that are dealing with different health issues, health problems. Uh, especially, there are still some who are dealing with COVID, but the numbers are way down, and uh, seems like a lot of people are doing okay. Uh, as far as with that right now, so just pray for that. Pray for what's going on, of course, with the uh, with Ukraine and and Russia and what's taking place with all of that. Uh, the, the those uh, the poor people in in Ukraine and, and, and how indeed they've got a massive number of people, uh, not just men but women, children, you know, that are uh, that are being killed and. Uh, and they're going through a very, very tough and terrible time right now with the Russians and what's going on with all of that. So I'd ask you to pray for that country and for what it's dealing with uh, as well, with the impact with that, and also um, how it impacts as well uh, the U.S. and what the U.S. does is for sanctions and different other things that it does uh, in trying to help Ukraine without starting an all-out war uh, with everything. So just pray for the whole situation uh, that's taking place with that. And again, the many, many innocent lives that are being uh, destroyed and the homes and the place and just so much devastation that is there. Uh, just pray for that whole situation for all who are there. Um, uh, again, on our prayer list, just remember the different people that are dealing with different health issues and health problems. Ms. Ginger. Uh, just traveling mercy to Sandy and uh, Abby. Okay. I'll probably get home a little bit later today. Um, just from about hours driving in Mississippi. Okay. So just traveling mercy for them. And um, I'm glad to see that Will came on his own today. Oh, he didn't come on his own. <laughs> no. She brought, yeah, she, she brought him. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you you missed that. You I see that? that? Yeah, I did. You see, uh, he didn't come on his own. Okay, well that's yeah. great. That's good yet. <laughs> but uh, and just for my family, you know, my husband, the Lord, myself. I think the situation with his ears a lot better. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. Other prayer requests. Yeah, Tinka. I have double. Go ahead. I would like us to pray for the family of that little girl that was killed in the parking lot of the school. Yeah. Uh, that was really tragic. It was. Yeah, that took place last week, for those of you who really don't know it, so in the parking lot of Our Lady of the Lord. Lord. Yes. Also, my daughter-in-law, Karen, went and had all of her teeth pulled out last week. Okay. Uh, she got home, and she stayed in a lot of pain. Sure. And the next day the pain was horrendous, so she went to the emergency room and they told her there was bone fragments and it still left in her gums. So, so she went to a different dentist and he opened her mouth up again and took all the fragments out okay. and cleaned that all up. Well, yesterday she started running a fever because she already had an infection in the mouth. Yesterday she started running the fever, so she went to the emergency room and her stitches are starting to fall out. And they told us she was septic. So she's taking a whole lot of medicine, which, God willing, will do the trick to get her to heal up. Uh, Next, my son Sean's surgery. Right. Postponed again. Oh my. <coughs> it's going to be on the 9th. Okay. <clears throat> and just pray that there's no more postponement. He's getting so tired that he's ready to say, forget it, I'm just going back to work. <laughs> so keep that in prayer. And then I have one unspoken prayer. 
Okay, sure will, yes. We'll remember Carrie and Sean, and as well as you, and, and you're right, remember that the family of this little six-year-old that was accidentally killed this past week in the parking lot. Um, same, and, uh, I think it was, yeah, all these the Lord's out there. Yeah, yeah, so just remember that family, because they, that's really, that's really horrendous as far as that, and dealing with that. No, no, no parent should deal uh, with something of such tragedy, but it was an accident. So, just pray for them. Other prayer requests. Danny. Olivia, she's home. She's got an ear infection. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Remember, Olivia, she's under the weather. She will. Yep. Others. Steve. Unspoken. Unspoken. Okay. All right. Janet. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Regardless of the office, government, president, all the way down to here in Cloudell, all who are in the government. Uh, so appreciate that. Yes. And also pray for the many, many people uh, in, the, in the front line, firemen, policemen, and such. Remember them. Always remember them in prayer. <clears throat> Especially now, remember your firemen. They, they go to a lot of calls right now because of people uh, with this with the cold weather, not in the heat, and they have to answer more calls, either with people carelessly uh, not watching what their lighting is for in the house, and, the, and there's fires going with that, and then also you have, because of the cold weather as well, you have people that deal with heart problems, and so they even go to different things like that to help with people, let's say they have a heart problem or heart attack, and many people don't realize that as well, so, so pray for them. Uh, the many are on the front line and what they do and uh, services they do as well. Other prayer requests. Thanksgiving, concerns, um, traveling mercies. Uh, just pray for those who are traveling and will be traveling um, for that. Um, and as always, give thanks, Lord, for answered prayer. Again, you've often heard me say, even if the Lord tells you no or if he tells you to wait, just thank him for it because there's a reason for everything. And you may not know the reason today or tomorrow or next week, but he'll let you know the reason. Uh, from experience, he'll tell you. And you'll realize and say, wow, okay, I didn't see that coming. But the Lord did. And he knows what's best in our lives. You know, what we may think is best for what we want, he may say, but it's not what is best for you. And so... Always give thanks to him for different things. And again, just pray for those who are not with us in person. Uh, pray for them. Um, and for, I'm sure there are some who are watching online. Pray for them as well. And the families and all who are there also. Remember each other in prayer during the course of the week. Pray for grace, mercy, and help. And again, traveling mercies, even for those going back and forth to work or in and around and whatever may be going on. Um, remember all the people in the nursing homes and the hospitals. Pray for them and remember them also in prayer. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Almighty God, as we come at this time, Lord, we lift up all the prayers, all the concerns, the many, many things that have been voiced, and the many unspoken prayers as well. We lift them all up before you. And Lord, most graciously, we ask for your help, for your grace, for your mercy, and we pray for your will to be done in each and everything. We pray for the many who are dealing with different health issues and health problems. And there are many, Lord. And we just pray for your healing power, for your help, your grace, and your mercy upon them. For those who are traveling and will be traveling, we pray for traveling mercies. You'll watch over them, be with them, and help them. Where death has come, we pray for comfort for grace and mercy upon those who are grieving, who are hurting, for because of the loss of a loved one or a friend or whatever it may be, and we pray for them. For what has taken place over in Ukraine between them and the Russians and how it even affects us, we pray for the many, many people that are affected by that situation, and we ask for your help in all of that as well. We pray for our government, from the president all the way down to people here who are in government here in Slidell and many other places as well. Again, traveling mercies for those who are traveling and will be traveling. 
Watch over them, be with them, help them. For those who are in the hospital, like Danny Hall and maybe others as well, we lift them up and we pray for them. And we ask for your help in their life. Be with those in the hospital as well as in nursing homes as well. Many, many unspoken prayers that they lifted up to you in privately. And so we pray for them also. Be with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Let us stand at this time as Al now comes and leads us in our offertory hymn, hymn number 337. I know whom I have believed.
As I mentioned earlier, if you have your Bibles, turn, if you will, to Daniel chapter 3, looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three who stood together. You know, in this life, it is full of ups and downs. Many of us have experienced ups and downs, good and bad, trials, tribulations, temptations, and a lot of choices we had to make along the way as well. Life is not easy sometimes. Let me rephrase that. Life is not easy many times. Many times we, we do deal with things that we don't like to deal with or have things that we are dealing with. But understand that, as the Word of God says as believers, we will face difficult times. It's not a bed of roses sometimes when a person does come to the Lord. Even if he doesn't, he's still facing difficult things. But according to the Word of God from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Jesus Christ will be persecuted. He didn't say it was in, it's just a budget. He didn't say you won't, you will. Because this world, Satan, and others will indeed try to deter you from walking by faith with the Lord, as he would have you to do. So here in Daniel chapter 3, you're probably very familiar with it. We have three amigos, three believers, three brothers in the Lord. And they find themselves with a very, very difficult choice. I often wonder, what would I do? What would you do? Facing what they faced and dealing with what they had to deal with. And this choice to them meant either death on one hand or life on the other hand. This is what hung in the balance for them. Today, don't focus on the when or the why we will face trials. But the question is always is how will you handle the trials when it does come into your life? Again, I mentioned it, and all of us, regardless of your age and I'm looking out, you have faced many trials, tribulations, and you know yourself. It's not if, it's when these come into our lives and how we handle it. You know, what choices will I make? Will I stand by faith in God and His Word? Or will I give in to the temptations and deny the Lord and His Word? And, you know, there are many times where, sadly, we have compromised the things of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but it's come back to, to bite us. It's come back to hurt us every time we've done that. So today, let us learn from these three grown men who are in this foreign country, away from family, friends, with this heathen city in, in the city of Babylon. And there they stood together, and we learned from them. First of all, if you notice in the first 12 verses of chapter 3, notice the temptation, or in this case, the temptation itself of what they had to face and what they had to deal with. King Nebuchadnezzar, he made an image of gold. It was 90 feet high and 9 feet wide. That was tall. And he set up on the plains of Dura in the providence of Babylon. Then he summoned, all these are his advisors and people in his office, the satraps, the perfects, the governors, the advisors, the treasurers, the judge, the magistrates, and all the other providential officials to come to dedicate the image that he had set up. So when the satraps and the perfects and the governors and the advisors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrate, and all the other providential officers assembled for the dedication of the image that the king Nebuchadnezzar set up, they stood before it. Then he made a proclamation. Then he loudly proclaimed, This is what you ought to do, and he commanded him to do it. O people, nations, and men of every language, 
as soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zip, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship immediately will be thrown into a blazing furnace. Wow. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of all of these instruments, the horn, the flute, the zit, the lyre, the harp, and all the other music, all the people, the nations, and the men of every language, they fell down and they worshipped the image of the gold that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But, watch what happens. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the zit, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music to fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship, they will, they, they will be thrown into the blazing furnace. But, Lord King, there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They pay no attention to you, O King. They neither serve your gods, nor do they worship the image that you have set up. So, again, here we have three who have been given these names. And their actual names was Hananiah, Mizael, and Azariah. This was their given name. They were given these Babylonian names. And this is how we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they decided they were not going to give in to the temptation. And instead, what they did, when everybody else was doing it, they stood tall. And they stood... In order, in, in, by faith in the living God. They were confident in the Lord and His power, and they knew that even though they were not in Israel, they were in Babylon, that God was still in control, that God was still there. Maybe, maybe they remember the Word of God, and they remembered what Isaiah wrote. And what was said in Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, it will not sweep over you. And then when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Maybe when they saw or heard of the blazing furnace, they remembered that. And they said, our God is great and awesome. You know, faith means obeying the word of God and the Lord, regardless of our feelings within us or regardless of the circumstances, or even the consequences we face before us, if we do not do what the heathens or what they tell us in order in direct contradiction to the Word of God, or to God's Word. You see, to bow down before this idol, even once, no matter what the excuse they might give, what would it do? It would destroy their witness as ones who believe in the one true God. Also, it would also destroy their fellowship with God. It would break that fellowship. Because you see, falling down to a false idol meant they were turning their back on God. What was the one thing that the Israelites always did that got themselves in trouble. That's right, every time. Even though they knew the power of God, they would always turn their back on God and worship false idols. There were no gods at all. And they would do that. 
So here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood firm and they knew what it would do. If others saw them, they would say, well, wait a minute, all this time, you've been telling us how mighty and great your God is, and you're bowing down just as we are. And so, you see, it would break a witness, and, and it would also break their fellowship. You know, people today, you don't think about it, but they give in to the temptations of the things of the world. And in some cases, it will cause them to lose or to destroy that witness which you were showing to someone else that you were a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and that for whatever reason you compromised that. You maybe like others and you just said eh, it doesn't really matter. But it did matter. But also, in some cases, it also destroyed their fellowship with God. Slowly but surely. And, you know, understand that you do one compromise, where do you stop after that? Where do you say, hey, enough is enough. I'm doing, you know, I, it's just too much. And it's hurting. And it not only hurting your witness, because what happens is, is people are not going to believe you if you compromise and you think that it's not worth it. They're going to say, well, if you're not think it's worth it, why should I? And so others as well. And so it hurts both of them. Maybe also these men remember the words that Samuel told Saul when Saul compromised. And Saul did not obey the word of God. Back over in 1 Samuel 15 and verse 22 and 23, when Saul did not keep the word of God, and he did not do as God had told him to do. And Samuel told us to Saul, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of the ram. For the rebellion is like the sin of divination, and the arrogance is like the evil of idolatry. And because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. You know, many times we look for the blessings of God in our life, don't we? And sometimes we don't have God's blessing because we have compromised, because we have not. We have not obeyed his word. We have, indeed, like so many, we have prostrated ourselves before these so-called idols that we look at it, giving in to the temptations. So here we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they decided, they chose not to fall down and not to lose what was the most valuable thing in their life, their relationship with Jehovah God, Amen. their witness to others. They were standing tall, even if it meant being thrown in the fiery furnace. To them, that was worth more than even their own life. That is, their faith and their worship in the Lord. Again, to compromise is to really disobey the Word of God and what it, what it says to us as well. So here they had, and they made their choice. They decided, we're not going to do this. So, they were brought before the king. And so in verses 13 to 20, we see they, they go to trial. Now they're going to stand before the king. Now they are in tri on trial for their very lives because they disobeyed King Nebuchadnezzar. So now they're on trial. So what happens during the trial? Here's what took place. Furious with rage, he's angry, he's upset, he's mad. Nebuchadnezzar, he summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar asked them, said, Is it true what I heard? Did you really not fall down and worship? As he says, Is it true that you did not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now, I'll give you another chance. I'll give you another choice. Here you go. 
Now, when, they, when you hear the sound of the heart, the flute, the zit, the lie, the harps, the pipes, and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? I am mighty. In my hand, he's telling them, I hold life or death. If you do what I say, I'll give you life. If not, off with the head. You're going into the blazing furnace. Can you imagine standing before that? Put yourself in, the, in their places. And you were told this. And here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in 16 replies, O King Nebuchadnezzar, you do not need to defend ourselves with this matter. It's already been decided as far as they're concerned. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, okay, the God, that is Jehovah, we save is it? we serve, is able to save, serve, save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, okay? But, even if he does not, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. The Nebuchadnezzar, he was furious. And he's, this is the three men now that he put into office, and he had them there, was some of his officials. And so he was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them had changed. So he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and throw them into the blazing furnace. There you go. There we go. These men, they were brought before the king. And they were given, again, as I said, a chance to change their minds. If they change their minds and they compromise their value and what they believe and what they knew was right, they could go ahead and save life. After all, look at today. Everyone else is doing it. So it must be okay. And everyone else back then was worshiping and bowing down. So everyone else was doing it. Or maybe today, maybe your job or your office, maybe your position of where you're at, demands that you do some compromising when it comes to the fact of you and your values that you hold true, that God has instilled upon you. And again, I say the same thing. Understand, when you compromise in one area, where do you stop at the compromising? And where does it end? You know, it's just like a lie. If you tell one lie, then what's going to happen is this. You've got to tell another lie to cover up that lie. And then you've got to tell another lie to tell, cover up that lie. So what happens? So you're telling lies right off the bat. And so what happens is this. By doing this, is it possible that you become desensitized to sin? And not only do you start telling lies, but you start doing other things as well. Why? Because now you have compromised the Word of God and what the Word of God says. And so, how are people going to trust you? How are people going to relate to you? How are they going to know if whenever you're telling the truth or if you don't stand for what you know to be the truth? And so, here they have it. So, before them stood a king and a blazing furnace. I, I can just see them looking at this blazing furnace. And here the king was so furious, what did he do? Yeah, seven times hotter. I don't know about you, but hot is hot. But seven times hotter. I mean, this is, this, he was furious. And, 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 and again, we, we see this as they stood there. But, the, but again, but the times of adversity are usually times of opportunity. Especially for us believers. Because you know what's going to happen is, as I mentioned earlier, it, as we live godly lives, we're going to be per persecuted for our faith. We're going to be persecuted for the things we know are right and true. Because we live in a land now where so many people have gotten away from God and the things of God. We see this happening over and over and over again. And so we as believers, adversity, persecution, 
It being an opportunity for us to live by faith, to walk by faith, and to acknowledge that we are who we are because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done. And we're, we constantly, I feel, in some cases, you may go on trial for your faith on a daily basis. You know, we have three, two other guys that were told not to proclaim the name of Jesus any longer. Peter and John. And over in Acts chapter 4, in verse 18 and following, they went before the Sanhedrin. And they were commanded not to proclaim the name of Jesus to anyone any longer. And here is what their reaction was. So they called him in again, that is the Sanhedrin, and they commanded him not to speak or teach about all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Now you judge for yourself whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. You see, they went on trial before their own peers. They were told not to proclaim Jesus Christ. And they too walked by faith, not by sight. And they knew the importance of, not, of saying, no, I'm not going to do this. And I think more, more Peter as well. You know, I could, just, I could just go into Peter's mind and Peter says, you know, I did this once. I'm not going to do it again. Amen. I denied the Lord three times. There's no more denying. I know what is true. I know what is right. So we're going to do this. And so here we have them. And so, again, these men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, these men believed that God could deliver them, even from the hands of who thought was in control of things, Nebuchadnezzar. And even though they faced a, this blazing fire, but even if they didn't, and it's awesome, the statement of what he said. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O king, we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. They will not do this. See, one day, maybe in our lifetime, I'm not sure, but one day, you may face the same choice, literally choice, where one day you may be told, you cannot worship God. You must worship the beast and the image that's going to be set up. You know, what was told to us in Revelation. You know, it's going to, it, it's, it may happen to people today. And, and so, it's either obey God or obey man. And so here this image was there. But yet they have resolved themselves. And they said, it ain't going to happen with us. And even how God does it, we know. We know. He will be with us as well. We're not going to serve your God. So on trial for their life, and yet they still were resistant. And they still did not compromise. And they still remained faithful to the things of God. And so we have the last part, the triumph, and what took place. Now, again, they had no idea the end of this. As far as they were concerned, being thrown into the blazing furnace and this fire furnace, as far as they were concerned, they were as good as dead. They were going to get killed in the blazing furnace, but they also knew that they will stand before God and give account of themselves. And so to them it did not matter, but here we have the awesome triumph that took place. Seven times hotter, right? This place and firm. So in verse 21, so these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The, king command, the king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into, I would like to say thrown into, the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar at once leaped to his feet in amazement and asked advisors, 
Wasn't there three men who were tied up and thrown into the fire? And they said, yes, there was. And then in 25, he says, he said, look, I see four men walking around the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looked like the son of God's. And Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they came out of the fire. The satraps, the perfects, the governors, the royal advisors crowded around him. And they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was the hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of, fo of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar praised, said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command, who were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I, Nebuchadnezzar, decree that the people of any nation or language who says anything against this god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces, and their houses be torn into a pile of rubble, for no other guy can save them in this way. Then, they, then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. So, here we have it, the triumph, the temptations and the trials that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faced. It served as a platform for the true triumph king. For God. That fourth person walking around that Nebuchadnezzar saw and he had no idea who it was. We think it was the pre-incarnated Jesus Christ who there stood and protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the blazing furnace and from death. But it also, it also showed and gave a very important message to Nebuchadnezzar. You see, it showed the power of Jehovah God. It showed who was indeed in control. Amen. And it wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. But it also showed God's mercy, grace, and love that was being distributed. Again, it showed it. And this brought honor and glory to God. Who did Nebuchadnezzar praise? He praised God. Not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But he praised and he saw, indeed, how powerful the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were. And God is still powerful today and he's still in control. Even though everything around us is going to pot. And everything around us seems to be going down, down, down. God is still in control. And there are still things that he, he brings into fruition as well. And understand that they brought honor and praise to God all because of what they did. What did they do? They obeyed the word of God. They did not give in to the temptation of worshiping a false god, a false idol. Instead, they maintained their integrity and their faith in God. And Nebuchadnezzar saw this. Remember, what, what, did, he, what did he say about them? They trusted in him, that is in whom? In God. And they defiled the king's command and were even willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. You see what kind of statement Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego sent? Not just to somebody, but to a very powerful king. He said, he sent, them, he sent them a message. And remember, go back to what he said. It doesn't matter whether you throw us in there. It doesn't matter whether God saves us from here or not. We're still not going to worship your idol. We're still going to maintain our faith. See, they had no idea what was going to happen when they were thrown into the blazing furnace. Again, to me, for them, they assumed that, hey, this was it. We're going to meet God face to face now because we're as good as dead. They had no idea what all was going to happen and what was all going to take place. But they still maintained it and they obeyed the word of God. And understand, God is able to deliver. But even if he does not, 
we too must hold and maintain the same thing that these three men bore witness to. Even if God does not, we must determine to walk by faith and not by sight. And that our greatest victory is being that of a witness for our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. You know, there are many, if you go back even in the New Testament, to where many, where they were not saved from the arenas, they were not saved from the lions, they were not saved from different things, and yet they maintain their faith. They still continued on. People today, there's going to come a time, I don't know when, but the Word of God tells us, there's going to come a time where we're going to have to make a choice, where we're going to have to make that decision and say, who do we follow? What do we do? Do we, do we still maintain our faith and not do what man wants us to do? And the only way that you are able to do this is if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had a relationship with God. It wasn't just a head knowledge. They believed in the one true God. And even if it meant death, they were not going to compromise that faith or that fellowship as well. You know, at the end, toward the end of Paul's life, he wrote Timothy. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16, here he, he relates, he says, At my first defense, no one came to my support, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood at my side. And he gave me the strength that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was delivered from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to the heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. See, we need to maintain the same thing. But the only way that we're able to do this it's not in our power and our strength. It's in His power and His strength. It's when we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's when we walk with Him daily. It's when we are obedient to His Word, and not the Word of the world or the things of the world as well. So the question is, is do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, today. Make it your business. Make it your business to go ahead and settle the matter and put faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and know that no matter what He is ever present with you. He's ever present walking with you. Just as, just as here the Paul says, he says everyone deserted me, but there the Lord stood at my side. Everyone may desert you, but the Lord is ever present with you and He gives you the strength and the help and that comes only by knowing Him. So today, if you do not know Him, come and know Him today. Give your heart and your life to Him as well. Let us stand. Almighty God, as we come at this time, and if there's anyone here, Lord, that does not truly know You, I pray, I pray, Lord, that they will choose You today. I pray that they will decide to look to you and have fellowship and obey your word and what you have said. As you have told them, come unto me, all who are weak and weary, and I will give you rest for your soul. I pray for any and all, in the name of Jesus. Amen. If God has spoken to you today, you come as we sing hymn number 294, Have Thine Own Way. Have Thine Own Way. Have Thine Own Way. Have Thine Own Way.
hey, we do it. He wants to come, go ahead, you take it, walk in. He wants to sing, trust and obey. Amen. Okay, I, I hope y'all don't run out. I'm not a singer. Okay? <laughs> I can't run either way. I, but, I, <laughs> but I thought of this song quite a bit this week. And then listen to the message today. The pastor was talking about trust and obey. So I said, you know what? He's telling me that, hey, I probably need to sing this song, so I'm going to give it my best, okay? I'll give it my Okay. <laughs> with the Lord and is trusting him and obeying him and sometimes it, it's hard to to trust sometimes it's hard to obey but when we do and it's good coming from someone too who, who, who is in there with the secular people and knowing hey this is important and it's important for us too as well so again from what the Word of God says, we just need to maintain our faith in Him. And when we do falter, understand, the Lord knows, and He helps us, and He'll pick us up as well. And He'll give us another shot at it. He gave Peter another shot. He'll give us another shot at the opportunity to proclaim Him and to, and to know this. So, again, thank you for that, Clarence. That meant a whole lot to everyone. So, thanks. I pray that those who watched online did not just 
leave afterward, but I hope that they got the message that you were sending as well. So appreciate what you have done as well. So we're all in this together, and we just take it one day at a time. And I thank the Lord for his grace, his mercy, and his power, and what he has done. Let's all stand at this time, and uh, again, remember the many things that are going on. Uh, this coming Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study for those who would like to come. 6 to 6.30, we have food and fellowship, and 6.30 to 7.30, we have Bible study for both men and women. Um, and then next Sunday, we'll resume our Bible study slash Sunday school at 9 o'clock, uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then Sunday school, and then worship service at 10.30, so... Uh, I also have the Easter Banquet sign-up sheet. I'll put that in the back. You can sign up for that if you'd like to afterwards as well. Uh, may God bless and be with each and every one. And again, walk with the Lord as you journey in this life. Al, lead us in a closing prayer, please, sir. Heavenly Father, again, we come before you. Thanking you, Father, that you've done. Thanking you, Lord, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Sometimes, Father, not even realizing the number of blessings that we receive. Sometimes, Father, we have trials and tribulations. But when we look to you, we know that you are there. Give us strength to go through these things. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with us if we leave this place. Bring us back to worship again together. In thy son's precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.